I've painted murals, and I paint murals every now and then. And I say that because since the piece I did here in 65, I probably painted about a quarter of the, a quarter of the number of murals that a mural artist would have painted, to put it like that, for many reasons. Um, I've got a little bit more here that I wrote, I'm going to force myself to read because I think it's worthwhile. Um, reparations, reparations will bring opportunity to create schools and research along with the means to go about heading, healing our people from the trauma they still suffer. This is real. This is not about a guilt trip. This is not about feeling sorry for anybody or any of that kind of stuff. It's just real. Just like those guys that are, and, 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 and women who are in Iraq now, who are being damaged. But what about the people they're damaging? We only talk about those that are being damaged. What about all the Vietnamese that are damaged? That it will take, in some cases, that they'll never get over. The lack of representative acknowledgement of the hideous crimes that were committed over a period of 400 years. America, if America's conscience can stand that, then we should be able to understand when we have the kind of barbarism that breaks out. That's the same spirit that used to, to entice, uh, to give great pleasure to huge throngs of well-dressed white people to come out to a nigger barbecue, as they used to call it. I got a whole book of photographs of that, by the way, that stuff. Now, what does this do? What is the purpose of this knowledge? The purpose of this knowledge, again, is to get a full understanding of what America is, what America has done, and what America is not owning up to as a standard of freedom, of, of, and, and so on and so forth. The real workings of our government, the knowledge of what has come before, will give us a kind of freedom that it's impossible to have when you carry this kind of guilt on you. When you carry this kind of, now I'm not talking about guilt tripping on, a, on, a, on an individual basis. I'm talking about a debt, a great, a huge debt. People that are still damaged because why? They don't, they're, they're, they're afraid to look at their past. How do I know? Because I was afraid to look at mine. And I'm one of the few people that I know African people who, I'm a self-trained historian. I had to go to the book. I had to force myself as a teenager to start digging into some of that material that was real hard to come by then, and a lot of it was so painful that it was, it was almost impossible to get through. Um, the heart of Renaissance was the emerging of young artists such as Jacob Lawrence, who was a friend of mine, and and he came down here as a mentor, as a, a support. When the mural that I did, that I, I, I think I will be able to show you, um, that I did uh, on a commission for the Justice Center, that's now in the uh, Convention Center now, uh, called Belale Odyssey, when, when that mural was unveiled, uh, Jacob came down uh, and uh, visited and celebrated with me. Um, the Harlem Renaissance was emerging of young artists such as Jacob Lawrence, as I said, with older black artists. And this is the important thing, with older black artists, teachers, and writers. Jacob Lawrence began his famous Toussaint Overture series at 16 after being exposed to, to that historical figure and others by one of the writers he met at an after-school arts program run by black artists. So I want to show you some slides of my work, <coughs> some of my work. Um, and I'm going to start out with a piece that is a very early piece. Talk. This, this. Uh -oh.
Now, I, this is my first oil painting. Now, what I'm talking about is knowledge. Knowledge of self and what it can do to propel your art, how it informs your art, and how it shapes you as a human. Uh, this is my first oil painting at 11. And as you can see, the, 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 the figures are, are, are not, you know, uh, painted that well, uh, uh, the uh, proportions and so forth. But look at the horse. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> but what color do you see for cowboys and cowgirls? This is a little black boy painting this now, okay? Now, I painted it completely out of my head. And, uh, of course, I always wanted to have local... Uh, uh, regional locale in my pictures, even at that age. Another picture, this was done when I was 19, and I just completed about, mm, about three or four months of riding freight trains, uh, mostly to San Francisco and back. And here I'm in a scene that never existed, that never happened, <laughs> but I, why the, the, the two guys there? That's because the only kind of folks that I ran into while I was hopping freight were white guys that we call, we call ourselves tramps. I always traveled alone and really never hung out in a jungle with any of the other guys. But the reason that uh, I included them again was to show just how alone I was, just how uh, even though I'm there, I'm not there. As much as I felt about society. I didn't feel it. At that time, I became aware of the fact that I actually wasn't a citizen um, of the U.S. 21, and uh, you may notice at the right, lower right-hand corner, back to this knowledge. You only see Isaac there. Isaac, Isaac. Okay? Right after my 20, 21st birthday. Why only the first name? Well, when I was in the seventh grade, we had a, the teacher had a, a uh, what do you call it, a project for us to do. And we were going to send off for our coat of arms according to our family names. Well, when we got them back, now this was a school, George Elementary school at the time, it's George Middle School now in North Portland. When we got these coats of arms or replicas of these coats of arms and, and a little, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them, uh, a tree, you know, and all that kind of stuff uh, of descendancy and so forth with the name, I found out to my surprise that I was Irish. <laughs> <laughs> From that moment on, I was so embarrassed, I didn't ever say anything to anybody, and I don't remember anybody else talking, I think my mind just went blank, but I said to myself that one of these days I'm going to change my name to a name that is an African name, but i got to know what the name is about. So in 1966, I changed my name to Isaac Nomo, a uh, Dogon name. The Dogon, after studying knowledge, knowledge, no words, <coughs> changed all that for me. Allowed me to free myself up from the slave name that was attached. The, uh, and the importance of history, I couldn't have painted this mural without the library being there. I was working as a work-study student there at, here at Portland State. Right, actually, it was right downstairs. That's where the library used to be. Uh, and, 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 and stacking uh, periodicals. And I came across uh, the, what is it, the Vanguard, uh, bound copies of Vanguard. And since my family, we came up here from Texas when my father escaped uh, a near death from a lynching because of his attitude, the same attitude I have now. I just, you know, it's, we got it in us, you know? Uh, and sent for us six months later. That's how we came to the Uh The Vanport flood, we came to Vanport. Uh, we weren't part of that, that, that group that was brought up to work the shipyards. By that time, 1947, uh, most of that work was, was, was done. Now, 
there was a black population here. There were other uh, populations, but mainly there was a large black population that was numbered now about 19,000. Uh, about 5,000 of those lived in Vancouver. Um, what to do with these people? Jobs, we couldn't get jobs. Um, it was it was very very difficult, um, but while working in the library and running into these old bound vanguards, I in leaping through them I saw evacuation of Vanport Extension Center, Vanport College. Okay, I saw where they were removing books and desks and all those kind of things long before we were. Long before the flood, okay? The day of the flood, uh, notes were slipped under our doors. I did have a copy, at least I had a photostatic copy of, of, of that note that said, do not panic. In essence, <laughs> do not leave until we tell you to leave, okay? Within, in less than, I'll say, two hours, water was gushing down our street, okay? The man was running. The dike is broken. The dike is broken. So that was the Vanport flood. In, in 48. It very handily removed <laughs> a, a population, not just the blacks, but also the poor whites and others who lived there, uh, and uh, be, then began to move from one housing project to another. Uh, and the, the breakup of many families, including my own, my mother and father. With, I'm one of 14 children. And uh, so for us and for many other families, uh, the welfare experience began at this time. The, the uh, program that uh, removed people from its roles if the husband was caught visiting even. It couldn't be anywhere on the premises. This was the beginnings of the fragmentation of our community as it never, it, it had never been before since late. Uh, moved down to Lincoln Hall, which used to be Lincoln High School, and then from that point on came the upward march up Broadway for Portland State University. The figures there uh, represent uh, African people who were a part of that flood, who were devastated by that flood. Some people lost everything. Uh, the totem pole is a reminder of the culture that was uh, conquered, that was uh, uh, beset upon, that was extinguished more or less. That's how I saw it then, and not too different now. <laughs> uh, the figure that is below there that is being held and the figure that is soaring up above is the same figure. He's an African-American man who was the first junior class president of Portland State University, a guy that I knew personally who committed suicide from some extenuating, circ extenuating circumstances. Um, I've got um, notation of the flood there, new construction, those kinds of things. This was painted on a canvas and glued to the wall with Elmer's glue wall because I didn't know what I was doing. And if you notice, it's, it's some, someone really likes, let me go back, someone really likes my work to the tune that they like to scratch X's in all my faces. So those of you that go past the mural here uh, the, in the landing between the second and third floors, you'll know, if you look close that some semi-sharp object has been used to slash all the faces with X's. It's also happened on some other pieces that I'll, one I'll show you later. This is uh, 10 feet by 15 feet. This is a painting that was 1965. I left Portland State and went to work for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in Arkansas. There was a field secretary and led the desegregation of one of the towns there. Stuttgart. 
a spirit of black nationalism, pan-Africanism, um, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. This is what was happening. I'm living in San Francisco now. It's 1966. And these are two of my blood brothers and an old partner standing there that we used to call Bohol. So you can see the red book, an indication of the thought, uh, the Pan-African flag, of course, and dominoes, and some commentary on Christianity with the, uh, the cross around the hyena's neck. In the same spirit was this piece created. Uh, it was begun in 67 in San Francisco. I left San Francisco and went to Alaska and then eventually got, came, back to, uh, came back to Portland in 68 and finished that piece some, well, about a year after I came back here. Uh, there are, uh, this is a collage, it has some uh, cartoons from Muhammad Speaks. Uh, I was in the Nation of Islam, an officer in the Nation of Islam, in the mosque he set, here, set up here in Portland. More history. The, I should go back to just a little bit. Uh, the, the excerpts from Muhammad speech are really, they're very important. Uh, that newspaper was very important, played a very important role in my life in the role of, in, in the, and, and in the role of many African Americans uh, because it was the only news organ that we were able to put our hands on that was produced by black folks for black folks. Uh, it was the only organ whereby I could see what folks were doing, for instance, in the East Coast. There was a, 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 a correspondent named Joe Walker, an African man, who was traveling all through all the early 60s, through the early and mid-60s, was traveling through Southeast Asia and so forth. So we knew about what was happening in Vietnam before it hit most of the, the, the general press. We, we knew what was going on there. Um, and we knew what was happening in Africa. We had news from Africa, from, from the Middle East and so forth. So there was a connection there that we couldn't get from any other source. My, uh, I guess, I think this is the first mural that I did uh, after, uh, I did a couple of smaller ones. But uh, this project was a CETA project. I was able to write uh, grants for a total of over $100,000 and employ six artists, including myself, for a year. We painted six murals around this building, and um, the theme was African American history, of course. Um, so here we have the. Where's that little pointer in there? Uh, this is the Human Resources Building. Actually, the building <coughs> still stands on Alberta and Vancouver, uh, Alberta Street and Vancouver Avenue in the north, northeast corner. Right? Yeah. Tune of one a day, coming out of Portland. We have, here we have the uh, totem, totems again, and here you see how this has grown, this idea has grown. Here we have a turret of a battleship, you can't see all the murals here, coming out of this totem. Then we have the Indians at Salido Falls. I remember when they uh, did the thing with the Downs Dam and, and canceled out Salido Falls. For me, I was, what, it was 50, 56, I think I was 15 at the time. It hit me so hard that I couldn't share it with anybody. <laughs> I used to go east um, 
When I was 14, I won a, a national art contest, and I was able to attend the University of Kansas <coughs> for three summers, 14, 15, and 16, and study with the art students. Um, and so I, going, going down the Columbia course, I would notice the, uh, the uh, Indians fishing. Uh, before that, my family moved to Ohio right after the flood. My mother decided she didn't want to live in Ohio, so of course we came back to Oregon. But, and I noticed that at that time, this was in 48, and, 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 and this was a beautiful sight to me, and I knew what it represented. Uh, so I was very sad, in fact I cried when they uh, did away with the falls. Uh, have this rainbow here that's canceled out. And then we have the, the new arrivals, the African Americans, the Native American that used to, to have a different view. If you look at the old uh, photographs of Native Americans, you will see almost universally that they've been whitenized. That's one of the way you, ways you conquer people, you know, is you breed them out. It, it's true. Um, it's true. Here I've employed some figures that are not so famous, myself, Mary Scott, uh, Wilbur Taylor at the time, he, he changed his name to Ali, he also became a member of the Nation of Islam. He died, uh, but not before. He was a great martial arts, uh, uh, he was a master of many systems. Um, and was able to, we got married at, a, at, a, at, a, at an older age, I mean, remarried again, uh, and moved to Africa with his guide who was from Ghana. So he was able to realize uh, a dream that we shared of being able to be put away in Africa, dying in Africa, uh, or at least being buried in Africa. Here we have a, a dancing going on in the community center. Uh, the merry-go-round at Jansen Beach is still the same merry-go-round. By the way, some of the images on this merry-go-round up here, for instance, there is a uh, uh, there's a guy in a coonskin cap who's holding a musket. He's holding a musket pointed this way, and there's an African man uh, who's on his knees with uh, some bundle that he had been carrying. And this was on the, along with Snow White, on the other panels, and uh, where is it, the, the three, the three figs on the next one, and so on and so forth. So uh, I didn't know that was there all the time that that, that Jansen Beach was out there at, the, at Jansen Beach Park, that that merry-go-round was out at the, the old Jansen Beach Park, which, by the way, was right next to Vanport, so that's where we used to go and uh, have fun. Uh, so, let me move on, I don't want to, yeah, here's Ali here. He was also a Mr. Oregon, Mr. Black Oregon at one time, he was a boxer and so forth. I tried to include people who are real living people as much as possible. Sometimes in the place of historical figures that there are no, uh, nothing but a description of and I tried to reach that description as much as possible with a, a live person. Uh, sometimes relatives, sometimes friends. This is the second mural that I did on that. Uh, that this was 1977-78 on that human resource. This is the flood itself. Most of this material was was, was uh, based on and taken from photos from my research in the uh, Historical Society, part of the Historical Society. South Africa, the, the, the peoples themselves, costume, all those things. 
this is a mural that was done with a apprentices and three other professionals. Um, we employed six youngsters on this project. It was done in 89. We did both sides of this building. It's about 70 feet long by 20 feet high. I call this one, now is the time, the time, the time is now. The face of Martin Luther King, some of you may have seen this, was painted by Paulo Digizua, who was uh, actually, uh, I believe uh, at one time, a student here. Yeah, he was a Right, and uh, he was a sculptor from Nigeria. And uh, I shouldn't say it was, I think he's still kicking. <laughs> <laughs> Just haven't seen him in a while. This is my, uh, one of my youngsters here, my son, to, to my left in the picture. Demetria Ford on the right, uh, crouching in the, the white uh, blouse, was went on to uh, PNCA, got her degree from PNCA. And Charlotte Lewis, uh, let me use this thing. Charlotte Lewis here uh, was talked into working on her first mural. This was her first mural. The other side there, um, I probably should have included that, but uh, Charlotte passed away in around. I think around 2,000, down in there, around in there, uh, cancer. So uh, there's the, the uh, with uh, one of my daughters and one of my sons in Peninsula Park. This was, uh, you see, 87. And here is more of the mural in a little bit better color. Again, there. You see, I've got to put a little message in most cases, in in most pieces. It's an opportunity to convey a thought.